Calvinism is frequently an extremely oversimplified and exaggerated way too often. But what if I told you Calvinism is not as dark as you think? Some non-Calvinists like to oversimplify Calvinism and call it evil and blasphemous. Many of them do this in order to deliberately make Reformed theology look bad and repulse people away from it. But of course, true Calvinists, sound Calvinists, see that and it actually makes them, the non-Calvinists, look bad. They like to oversimplify it by claiming all Calvinists believe God predestines or creates people for hell, or all Calvinists believe God predestines all evil events in history, or all Calvinists believe God has no love at all for the non-elect and zero desire to save them, or Calvinists believe God only loves the elect and hates the rest of mankind. They also claim that Calvinists do not evangelize or send missionaries, or that Calvinists believe God is pleased with evil or puts evil into men's hearts, or Calvinists believe the non-elect had and have zero opportunity to be saved. But are these oversimplifications accurate? Are they correct? Or are they unfair and dishonest? It's important for professing Christians to be accurate, truthful, and fair, especially when describing the doctrines of their brothers and sisters in Christ. Many, many great men of God were Calvinists, the original Baptists, the original Presbyterians, and even the original Southern Baptists were confessional Calvinists. Many of the greatest ever evangelists and theologians in history were Calvinists. For example, George Whitfield, Jonathan Edwards, John Bunyan, and Charles Spurgeon. Calvinists have preached to millions and millions throughout human history. Calvinists have bled and died for the sake of the gospel and on the mission field to foreign countries. Even John Newton, the creator of Amazing Grace, was a Calvinist. In response to those previous oversimplifications, with the exception of probably one, all are wrong and inaccurate. It is simply untrue that quote-unquote all Calvinists believe those things without exception. Their exaggerations, and some of them describe only what hyper-Calvinists believe. And it's important to know the difference between true Calvinism and hyper-Calvinism. For example, I don't regard the Westboro Baptist Church as Calvinists because they're hyper-Calvinists. They don't preach the gospel or offer the gospel. They barely talk about the, the cross of Christ. They don't proclaim the love and mercy of God. They are not true Calvinists at all, but perverse Calvinists. In fact, many respected Calvinist theologians and scholars do believe God loves every human, desires the salvation of all men, doesn't predestine anyone to hell, only predestines people to heaven, and gives a genuine offer of the gospel to the world. They even teach that the non-elect had a genuine opportunity to be saved, but were unwilling to come to Christ. Some even believe God grieves over the destruction of the wicked, or Christ mourns over the unbelief of his people, Matthew 23, 37. God says in Ezekiel 33, 11, that he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He calls and pleads sinners to turn, repent, and live, because he's a God of mercy and love. The Calvinists, especially the young Calvinists watching this video, shocked at hearing these things or who are shaking their heads right now, I encourage you to refine, reconsider, and reshape your Calvinism, just as I did. Make sure you don't go above and beyond biblical Calvinism. Make sure you don't make conclusions that the Bible doesn't make or affirm things that lead on the slippery slope to hyper-Calvinism. It's so easy to go on that slippery slope. As a Calvinist, I believe God desires the salvation of the non-elect in the sense that he commands them to repent and believe, and repentance and faith is pleasing to him. In his mercy, love, and patience, he offers them salvation in Christ, but they were not only unable, John 6:65, 6, but unwilling, John 5:40, to repent and come to him and have life. Therefore, they're more accountable for rejecting Christ. They have no excuse. They were offered grace, but they rejected the offer. Obviously, it would be strange for God to say, don't come to me and don't be saved because I desire your destruction. There has to be an outward call for salvation or no one would be saved. 
And that's what the gospel, that's what gospel preachers do. And the elect will come to come, come to Christ. John 6:37. There is divine sovereignty and human responsibility. They are perfectly compatible and true at the same time. And in Mark's version of the rich young ruler, it says Christ loved him, even though he was very likely a reprobate. Many Calvinist pastors and scholars have no problem teaching and believing that God loves the world, but with different types of love. He blesses the non-elect, withholds his judgment on them in mercy, shows grace, patience, and love to them, Matthew 5, to 45 offers them a genuine offering of the gospel, Matthew 11:28, Revelation 22:17, and of course John 3:16. God loves everyone and hates everyone, Psalm 5.5. 5. He shows love, grace, and patience towards everyone, but at the same time his anger burns against everyone for their sinfulness. God's hatred is a righteous hatred. Just as God commands or desires all men to be holy because holiness pleases God due to his holy character, so too God commands or desires all men to be saved due to his merciful character. These are according to his prescriptive will, or will of complacency, or will of disposition, rather than his divine, sovereign, infallible decree, as we see in Isaiah 46, 10, Ephesians 1, 11, Proverbs 16, etc. And from my experience, it seems the majority of Calvinist scholars reject quote-unquote double predestination and believe God only predestines the elect for heaven out of his unconditional grace and mercy while passing over the rest in his justice. These would reason, saying it's not necessary for God to predestine anyone to hell because they are already heading in that direction anyway. They're going in that direction already due to their rebellion and depravity, and God snatches out many, many burning branches from the fire. And of course, genuine Calvinists do not believe a true Christian can fall finally and totally from the faith and still go to heaven. We believe someone proves they're a true Christian by persevering until the end. And even their perseverance is by the grace, strength, and faithfulness of God. 1 Corinthians 10.13 There is no license to sin. We are called to holiness. This is unfortunately a very common charge against Calvinism. Yes, we believe in eternal security, and it's by the grace and transformation of God, the election of God, that someone is eternally secure. But we also believe in the importance and of perseverance and sanctification. While it is correct that all true Calvinists believe God ordains everything by his divine decree, Romans 8.28, it is also true that every man is absolutely responsible for the choices they make. They are genuine choices, not forced or manipulated by God. We are called to obey the word of God and are guilty of sin when we don't. God is not responsible for our evil actions. Sin is our own fault. Good and evil things in the world have a purpose. They're not random. It's worse for God to choose to allow these things for no purpose. In conclusion, all sound Christians know that God is sovereign, created the universe for his own glory, salvation belongs to him, and he graciously saves undeserving sinners who did nothing to earn it. It's a gracious gift from God, not because of works. We also believe in the Trinity. We believe in original sin. We believe in judgment. We believe in Christ's resurrection and atonement, and we can unite in sharing the message of salvation. Let's preach the gospel and call sinners to repentance and life in Christ because this lost world desperately needs it. The gospel is powerful and it changes lives and I know it changed mine. Let's be faithful to the gospel and continually proclaim it for the glory of God. The Calvinists who don't treat the gospel like a genuine offering to the world are hyper-Calvinists. Anyone who comes to Christ in faith will be eternally saved. Thank you for watching and grace be with you.